everybody. Welcome to Bad Bit Games. I'm your host, Joseph, and today we're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch. It's been out now for six months, and I'm going to tell you a tale of how Nintendo made me a Nintendo kid again with the Switch. Now, I'm going to break this console down. This is no five-minute video by all means. I want to talk about my expectations going into this console, the games, the power of the console, the mobility factor of the console, and my overall thoughts. And I wanna first start with the positives before I even talk about the negatives. So with that, where was I with the Switch? Before the Switch came out, I was skeptical to say the least. You could even call me a Nintendo hater for sure because for me, I love Nintendo as, you know, those childhood memories. It got me into gaming. The SNES is the most important console that I will ever play because it got me hooked into gaming. The N64 made me love gaming. It gave me the escapism that games offer us. And ever since the N64, I've kind of broken away from Nintendo. I've owned a GameCube for sure, but that's where I started playing more PlayStation games and, and Microsoft with the Xbox. You know, the Wii just felt like it looked like a gimmick, so I never really touched it. The Wii U, I bought it uh, thinking that it was going to bring back the third parties like Nintendo promised, but that console was a dud. And, and whether you liked it or not, it was a dud. And so going into the NX, Nintendo's not in a place to really gamble. At least that's what I thought. You know, they just need to make a console that is, you know, on par with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One that delivers Nintendo games. That's all Nintendo really has to do to get me on board because I'm sick of the gimmicks. I'm sick of the motion control. I'm sick of all these stupid decisions Nintendo does, whether it's how they treat YouTubers or all that jazz. I'm just sick of old Nintendo. Until I saw the, N uh, the NX commercial. And the NX commercial showed me a, a thing that I've always wanted. And ever since I was a kid playing the Game Boy, the problem with handhelds to me was they never caught my attention or they never immersed me in the game. The only games I could really come to mind that have truly immersed me where I felt like I was part of the experience was games like Gravity Rush and Pokemon. Those were really the only two big handheld games that come to mind. And with that, when I saw the NX and I saw the guy undock it and take it with him, play basketball, the guys are in the car and they're playing Mario Kart, that's something I've always wanted as a kid. I wanted a handheld unit, but that wasn't held back because it's a handheld. I don't want console-like experience. I want a console experience on the go. And that's what the Switch offered. And so for me, in the beginning, the Switch wasn't this thing that was going to be more powerful than the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One by no means. I thought it was going to be somewhere between a PlayStation 3.5 and a PlayStation 4. And for the most part, I think I got it mostly right on where the power was going to be. I think a lot of expectations were a little bit too high for this console. And so seeing the commercial, I'm excited. The press conference happens and we all know how much of a scrambled mess that conference was. And for me as a person, again, I'm an outsider when it comes to Nintendo. I am a filthy casual, but I want to enter Nintendo again. Ooh, that sounds a little weird. Anyway, romantically, uh, I see that there's not a lot of games. They're talking about motion controls. They're shaking around the stupid little Joy-Con to see if there's ice in it. It was dumb. It was dumb, and I just saw gimmicks. I saw old Nintendo, and I didn't see what was so cool about the Switch other than Zelda. And so when I pre-ordered this console, it was not because I wanted to. Because I was like, if I'm going to get burned by this, it's only me. I have an audience that relies on me for content that relies on me for my opinion. I'm going to get this thing and I'm probably going to rip it in half. I that's that's what I was guessing. And then I got it and I started playing Legend of Zelda. But even before I did, um I opened up the box and it was different. This thing didn't look like a Nintendo console. Usually they look like lunch boxes. They they look kind of silly. You know, don't mind the colors, but this thing actually looks pretty sleek and cool and then i put in zelda and everything changed so let's talk about the games so let's talk about it legend of zelda breath of the wild this game had no right to be anywhere as good as this game actually was and the switch owes all its success 
to this one game because of the hype because of the talk around this game it being that game that is already the game of the year and we're just in the month of march you know talking about how it's redefining a genre of how you travel in an open world game you know this game it's hype the reason why it's so good it really got people looking at the switch in a different light I remember this game being so immersive. I was on the train. Again, I said this in a video. I say it again. I almost missed my stop because of how immersed I was in this game in and out of the console, whether it was in uh, dock mode or whether I was taking it on the go. And when I think of games at launch, a lot of people go, well, Joe, the PlayStation 4 had 20 games, you know, or 20 plus games. The, the Xbox One had 20 plus games when they launched this this game this this console it only had like four or five games at launch but when one of them is literally your game of the year right off the bat that's saying something let's think let's talk about it was knack really the game of the year that playstation needed was rise son of rome the game of the year that the xbox needed was any of those games truly mattered at all no Again, I own a PlayStation 4. I own a PlayStation podcast. I co-host an Xbox podcast. I have no horse in this race. When I think about the year of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, the first year, I remember as a gamer, I was thinking about going to PC because I just wasn't liking my experience on console because there was no games that were really showing me what this console was all about right? You know, it was supposed to be Titanfall, and as much as I loved and played Titanfall, that game died within a month. It wasn't able to show us what Next Gen was capable of. Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs commercially did well, but critically and and us as customers, we felt ripped off, right? We are like, this is what Next Gen has to offer? Destiny. As much as I love Destiny so much, even too much, I'm going to be the one to admit here and say that Destiny, its first few months, was super, super rocky. So when I think about the Nintendo Switch, I think about games like Legend of Zelda. I think about games like Splatoon 2. I think about games like Mario plus Rabbits. This game has no right being this fucking good. And it is. You know, most of these games that have come out for the Nintendo Switch are either 7.5s, to tens and that's telling you something for a console experience every game that i've played on the nintendo switch has shown me what the console and its generation is able to do play games on the go or play games at home you are no longer restricted to just a tv to play your video games you could play it on a on a bus you could play it on a plane you could play it you know on a train you could play it anywhere green eggs and ham style right you can use the Switch anywhere, and that's what's so awesome about this Switch. What's so awesome about this console is that all these games, no matter what game you're, you're playing, shows you what this console is capable of, shows you what the point of this console is. And for all these games like Splatoon 2, Mario Plus Rabbits, Legend of Zelda, ARMS, and, and Mario Kart 8, the only dud to me is, is ARMS. So already six months in, we have four or five games that are stellar and to me must-haves for this console and i can't think of four or five games that was worth buying on the playstation one i'm sorry playstation 4 or xbox one in their first year and there's still more games to come you know we still have mario odyssey we still have xenoblade we have the yoshi game we have the kirby game we know we're they're making a metroid we know that there's going to be a fucking full-blown pokemon game on the switch and if that doesn't get 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 you all fucked in the head like me holy shit that's awesome that's what we always wanted as pokemon fans and nintendo fans remember when we were like pokemon stadium's nice but i would like it on like a true pokemon rpg on a nintendo console we're fucking finally getting that that is what is so awesome about the switch is some of the things that we wanted since we were young are happening and at the same exact time the games that are coming out are hit after hit after hit and now with that, we're talking about a console that does both a uh, handheld and a home console. Let's talk about its power for a second here, folks. 
Power, 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 power. It's, it's all what people talk about. Whenever a console is releasing or a console is about to release or it's we're comparing it side by side between something, we always talk about power. And I feel like comparing the Nintendo Switch to the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One is an unfair comparison because this is what the Switch looks like on its side. It's about as thick as a PlayStation 4 game case, maybe a little bit thicker. That's the size of this thing. It's about the size of... A iPad mini and what it does is completely out of the realm of what the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox one do so let's stop comparing the power of consoles that are just again supposed to just be in one place at all times this thing is a tablet remember that and so when we're talking about the power of this console to me I actually think the power is actually pretty damn awesome being able to play Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and there is nothing in terms of gameplay that is taken away from me when I go on the go with this thing is awesome. Yeah, sure, instead of what, 900p, it's 720, but the screen looks so great that it doesn't really matter to me. I'm going to be able to play Zelda on the go, a true Zelda on the go. I'm playing Mario Kart on the go with nothing taken away from me. I'm playing Splatoon on the go, nothing taken away from me. That is awesome. Again, not console-like experiences. It's console experiences in the palms of your hands. That is that is power. Again, what this console is, is a hybrid console. And for what it does, it truly does take my breath away every single time I play it and realize, wow, I am, I'm, I'm hanging out with my brother and I'm playing this in the palm of my hands. I should be playing it on the TV, but they're watching TV, so I'm just... I'm playing Mario Rabbids, whatever. And it's awesome. It's so awesome. And the immersion is there because nothing's taken away from you. Again, like I said, I'll repeat myself. Almost missed a stop because of how immersive Zelda was. I can, when sometimes I'm editing a video, I'll have my Switch docked and I'll be playing it. And then I'll be playing it for literally 30 minutes after the video is done uh, processing. And I'll be like, oh shit, I was editing, right? And, and I had to go back to it. That's the power of what this console is capable of doing. And so when I say, yeah, power doesn't mean anything in terms of it, you can't really compare it to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, it is a powerful console for what it is. And if you want that power of a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you were never looking at Nintendo in the first place. So now with power comes great battery life, right? No, no. Atme is going to be a little disappointed in that one. Uh, the battery life is what it is. It's two to three hours, depending on what game you're playing. Now, I was able to get like two and a half hours, a little bit more, out of Breath of the Wild. I was able to get two and a half more hours out of Splatoon and Mario Rabbids. And Mario Kart really was the hog out of it all. But for the most part, I get two and a half hours with every single game I'm playing at full brightness. It feels great. And to be completely honest with you guys, I'm never playing a handheld game for more than 30 to 40 minutes at a time. So for me, the battery life is perfectly fine. I'm not going on a long road trip. And how many times are we going on that long road trip, right? How many times are we on that 40 hour plane flight or that, you know, 12 hour road trip to Florida? Not that often. So we really got to Got to take the battery life for, for what it is. When I thought four to six hours and I heard two to three, I was like, this is garbage. I might as well plug it in at my home all the time. I'm always going to be charging it. And to be honest with you, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I'm playing it on the go and then I just, I put it into the dock because I want it to be safe and I'm, I'm always playing it. I've never run completely out of battery with the Switch. I've never ran it to zero ever. If the most I've ever run it to is maybe 20%, but I got home in time and I plugged it in, bam, no, none was the wiser. And that was the awesome thing. You know, we have to take our blinders and our nostalgia glasses off for a second because when I was playing the Game Boy back when I was about 8, 9, 10 years old, and we were going on those long road trips, we were going to Disney World, and did you say Disney World? And... Uh, I remember as a kid, I go, we need Pokemon, I need my Game Boy, I need Street Fighter 2, and we need batteries. Because halfway through that trip, I'm popping batteries out, and I'm playing again, right? We, we would run out of a pack of like 8 to 12 you know, Duracells for that trip because I'm always playing it. And so when I think about those long road trips, yes, guys, you're going to need an external battery. And if you're honestly playing 
the, the, the Switch handheld for more than three hours at a time. Please don't. That's going to hurt your hands. It's going to hurt your eyes. Don't. I can't do those long game sessions anymore. I'm old and decrepit and dying. So with that, I, I look at the console. I go, its power is great. And the battery is what it is. If you wanted those 1080p visuals, if you wanted these visuals, the battery is going to have to take. If you want it to be as slim as what it is, which is surprising for Nintendo, it is what it is. And so I rather have the form factor what it is than have it bulkier or bigger and have four to six hours batteries. I, it, I, it doesn't matter to me whatsoever. So with that, it sounds like I've been stroking the ego of Nintendo for a very, very, very long time. And let me tell you something. There are negatives with this console. So let's get to it. And first starting with the dock. So let's talk about the Nintendo Switch dock. It is probably the cheapest looking thing and the cheapest thing about the Nintendo Switch. It is all made of plastic. It is a bit flimsy on both sides and it will scratch your Switch. Now it will scratch your Switch on the black edges, not actually on the screen where you're looking at things. But A, for me as a perfectionist, that's why I have the screen protector on the Switch and it shouldn't have to do that in the first place. That is bad design. This thing is a bad design. I would actually rather it, if you're going to have it like this docked, I'd rather this whole part just taken off. If you're going to have it like this, I'd rather have it like this, in all honesty. Because when I put this against my TV, my OCD just starts yelling at me. Now let's take apart, or let's take a look at, rather, the ports. You have one uh, H... HDMI, one USB-C connector, you have the uh, the USB 3 connector right here, and then you have the HDMI right there. Not a lot of ports, it's lacking an Ethernet port. Uh, Splatoon 2 does lag when you don't have the best connection, and if you want the best connection, you always go with a wired connection. Why an Ethernet port isn't on here, and why they're charging us 20 to 30 bucks extra is fucking beyond me. And almost fucking criminal in my eyes. This is really, really stupid. It doesn't have an ethernet port. Now, there are not just the, the dock, though it does annoy me, there is one other thing as well that I don't like about the Switch. And I wish I can show you, but Nintendo would flag our account. And that is the UI. The UI works because it's a mobile UI when you first look at it but it is a little bit too basic. And when you throw it up on a screen, it looks really bloated and really, really ugly. Uh, the lack of Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Video has sadly taken its toll. In the beginning, I didn't care, but sometimes, yes, no, I, I wanna use my Switch and I want to you know, watch Netflix, whether I'm in bed or something else. I don't feel like turning on my PlayStation 4. It, sh it just should be there. It's I know it's a little complaint, but it's a complaint nonetheless. The last thing I do want to talk to you guys about, because we're not talking about the Pro Controller, is the Joy-Con grip. Let's take a look at the Joy-Con grip. So here it is, the Joy-Con grip. And as you can see, it's a bit small. Uh, unlike most controllers, when I'm using it and holding it, my thumbs and my fingers do not fall almost correctly into place. Instead, I don't know if you could see it, but my thumbs are in the middle of the Joy-Con. They're not falling perfectly to the analog sticks. It actually feels a little cramped and it feels just a little claustrophobic. So you go, Joe, that's not the biggest deal, right? No, I think it is because if you're using a PlayStation 4 controller, look at this, your hands, your fingers, they fall into place. They're exactly where they need to be. Let's take a look at for a second, an Xbox controller as well. Here it is, my favorite controller of all time, my Gears of War Elite Xbox controller. My fingers and everything fall right into place. There is nothing wrong with how my fingers are lined up. When they my hands fall into the controller, they just fall into place. With the Joy-Cons, they're a bit too cramped. The analog sticks as well, they don't have that movement that most analog sticks have. This is okay because it's a mobile console when you're on the go, but when you're playing at home, these analog sticks just aren't doing it for me. Now, if you don't like the grip, you don't have to play with the grip, and that's the one cool thing is that you could play 
with the grips separated. And again, I, I, I've ta talked to this many a times. This is also for people who have, you know, some physical challenges that they're unable to hold a controller uh, like we can. So this is awesome. They're able to play however way their arms are. And again, they're able to play games just like everybody else. And that is the beauty here. And the cool thing too with the Joy-Cons is you can place them wherever you want. So I have them at the base of my palms and I'm able to place my thumbs right into place. They fall right into place. So again, the Joy-Cons, there's some ups, there's some downs, but let's talk about some more of the downs when it comes to the Joy-Cons. That is the vibrations, the rumble, the HD rumble. Remember when they were marketing it so much? Yeah. It is exactly what it is. It's a gimmick. It sucks. Most devs do not know how to use it yet. Sometimes it feels like if you're playing a game like Snake Pass, like a fucking engine is about to take off. Even with some uh, with Mario plus rabbits, it gets fucking hella loud. You hear the and because you're not holding this console or you're holding the controllers uh, fully when you're holding it on the go or you're when you're using the Joy-Con grip. You don't get that vibration anyway, so it's kind of flawed, and it just makes a lot of noise. Now, the motion control is actually pretty impressive. That is something I'll have to give Nintendo, but I'm not a schlub. I don't use motion controls because I am a man. Now, I know, I get it. Splatoon players, I get it. Motion controls, they're better than analog sticks. Tell me some other time. But with that said, that's the things I don't like. So the Joy-Cons, to me... They are flawed, yes, and they are overly expensive. 50 bucks for each of these things? Nintendo, come on, what are you what are you fucking doing here? Building a rocket ship on your on your off days? Don't don't charge me this. That's outrageous. So overall, there are negatives about this console, but there are so many positive things about this console that come to mind that all these negatives just seem so small. And again, guys, I come from a PlayStation background. I come from an Xbox background. I have no horse in this race, but when I look at the Xbox and when I look at the PlayStation 4 and I look at my Switch, the games that I've been playing the most and I've been spending the most time on is actually my Switch, the less powerful console than all these other things I own. And what I've been playing the least is my PC, the most powerful thing I own. So power doesn't mean everything, guys and gals. You know, power is cool. Power allows you to do things that you can't do, but it doesn't limit you either, right? So with that, or, or limit you much, with that said, I've been playing the Switch the most out of any other console. I've been having the most fun with a Nintendo console I've had since the N64. And that's crazy to me. Like, yeah, I own a 3DS. I like the 3DS. I think it's a great console. And again, really helped Nintendo out in a very dark time. But it's not my favorite console from them. No. You know, I played my 3DS, but nowadays it's just collecting dust. If Nintendo keeps up what they're doing here with <laughs> my elbow, with the Nintendo Switch, they're going to have great things to come. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. This console is amazing. I've loved every minute, and there's not a time that I look at it and go, oh, wow, I made a mistake. You know, I think about that a lot with a lot of the purchases I make, especially when it comes to hardware. I go, wow, I have not played you in a while. It's not, it's not the case here for the Switch. I'm buying all these games that I didn't think and I wouldn't have bought two or three or even a year ago. I can't believe I'm playing Mario Rabbids and I'm enjoying myself as much as I am. You know, I can't believe I'm playing Splatoon and Splatoon is my most played game this year. It came out last month, guys. I have a problem. I, I can't believe I'm excited for Mario Odyssey, of which I got my hands on and I'm completely in love with. It's the closest thing we have to a Mario 64 in a very long time. So if Nintendo is able to keep this up, to me, the Switch won't be the just my favorite console since the N64, no. It'll be my favorite Nintendo console ever. I just said that. That just fucking came out of my mouth. But nonetheless, I love the Switch, and I want to know what you guys think down below. I hope that my stories here have affected your purchasing decision and that you're going to go out there and buy a Switch. But no, that if you're in it for the power, if you're in it for the 4K the, the 60 FPS you'll get in some games. 
or the you know the 1080p. This is not the console for you. This is if you like Nintendo, if you love their IP, that's why you buy this console. Everything else is just bonus. You know, I saw one guy online, and I'll end it here, going, uh, I'm going to trade my Switch in for a, a, an Xbox One S uh, because, you know, I don't even like N a Nintendo IP anyway, lol. And I'm like, then why the fuck did you buy the console? Like, why? If you're not, if you don't like Zelda, if you don't like Mario, what was the point of you buying it? Because you want to waste your money? You want to be part of the conversation? I don't know. But please don't buy this console if you don't like any of the Nintendo IP. This is something if if you've been jaded by Nintendo and you go, man, I do miss though. I do miss a good platformer. I do miss a good Zelda game. I do miss Super Smash Brothers. This is the console for you. And when I look at the future of what this console has to bring in terms of games, I think of Ubisoft. I think of Mario Plus Rabbits. I think of games like EA going, we're gonna bring Fee, we're gonna bring FIFA. And, and some more games onto the Nintendo platform. And Activision, the same. I think of the possibilities they're able to do if they talk to each other. Because we're not going to get a Battlefield 1. We're not going to get Call of Duty on this console. But what we are going to get, I feel, if Mario Plus Rabbids is any indication, is we're going to get some awesome IP, new IP. And if is that not what every gamer wants? New IP in the land of... Let's make a franchise out of everything. Don't you want new IP? And so I can see Nintendo and EA doing something special with each other that is maybe taking an old IP like, I don't know, Donkey Kong and making something different with it or going to Activision and going, let's do a Crash and uh, what would be a good Crash and Mario crossover or Crash and like something just out of the ordinary, right? with these two let's 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 combine forces here and again be able to make something new and special that's what games are going to come to the switch they're not the triple a they're more the double a they're more the indie and nintendo titles that we expect and to be honest with you i have a feeling that the nintendo switch is going to be my indie machine because every indie game that comes out i go i like it but i want to play it on the go so that's my thoughts on the Nintendo Switch six months in. Again, I'm head over heels over a Nintendo console. That is not like me whatsoever. But hey, it happens. Because here at Bad Big Games, it's about the games and not the platforms we play on. We talk all things PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, PC. That's what makes this channel so beautiful. If you like this in-depth analysis of what I've done with the Nintendo Switch, these little stories that I've gathered around and made something big with it, please hit like, share, subscribe. It helps me out, shows me that you care, and it shows you that, or shows me that you want more of this long content, and I'll give that to you. Uh, with that said, guys, thank you, and gals, thank you for making Bad Bit such an awesome passion project. It's literally the first thing I think about when I wake up. Last thing I think about when I go to sleep is how to make this channel better and doing some fucking crazy shit along the way. Uh, everybody, have a great one. Keep your wits about you. And, uh, well, I already said I have a good one, so I kind of fucked that up. Have a good one.